Hi guys. Hey everybody. How is everyone? Good to see you. It's good this, to see everyone. On this post-resurrection Sunday. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, our series about removing limits. And we know last week, talking about the resurrection, that removed the limit of death for Jesus to conquer. So today we're going to just talk about some practical ways to remove limits. So once again, we're glad to see you. Amen. Be with you. So Sarah's going to lead us in prayer. All right. So Father, we worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We glorify you. You are holy and righteous and lovely and pure. We come to you, Lord, and we just thank you that you are our father, our friend, our provider, our protector. Jesus, you are the name, the strong tower that we run into you. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the prince of peace, the great I am, the all in all, the alpha and the mega, the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah. We give you the praise, the honor, the glory, and the thanks, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are welcome here. We invite you, Holy Spirit, for just a mighty outpouring of your spirit today, a mighty outpouring of your mercy, a mighty outpouring of your goodness, a mighty outpouring of your love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you know each and every hair on each and every person's head. And you said not even one of them will be lost, Lord. So how much more do you know the needs of each and every person, their heart desires, their desire to know you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for an atmosphere of hunger, an atmosphere of faith. We drive out all doubt and unbelief. We thank you, Lord, that your glory comes forth today in a powerful way, that the word, the word that is able to save our souls will come forth, Lord. We thank you for the blood that Jesus shed on the cross that has granted us access to your presence and to your face, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you. We exalt you. Then now we have access to you. We are one with you and one with one another. So I thank you, Lord, that today will be a day where barriers are broken, where obstacles become obsolete, and where mountains are moved. And we thank you, God, for that. But it's all found in you, Lord. It's all found in you. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all the rest shall be given unto you, Lord. So we seek you first. We seek you first in your righteousness. We bless you. We bless your holy name. And we thank you, Lord, that each and every person who's here today will find answers for deep questions, deep longings, deep heart desires. We glorify you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, today we're going to talk about power of things that try to limit us that god has given us his spirit and his possibilities to deal with those limitations that we have in the natural and uh, we want to thank god for that and we'll study people that have overcome like abraham joshua david peter paul and most of all jesus overcame all the limitations that were trying to surround and hinder the purposes of God on the earth. We're going to start with Romans 5, verses 1 and 2 today, and then we'll build our case, and we're going to build a case today of, uh, and Sarah, <coughs> having a law background, she'll like this, we're going to build a case against limitations that try to hinder us from having all that God wants for us. Does that make sense? It does. All right. Romans 5 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So, the Bible says we've been justified. That word justified means we've been acquitted. Another legal term. We were, we had a debt that we couldn't pay in our sin. 
and that we owed that debt. So we owed it and we couldn't pay it. So we needed somebody to come get us out of that situation. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came and paid the price for our sin and the debt. And on top of it, made us right with God. And he calls us righteous. So we are very, very thankful for what Jesus did. And that's that. So that was all done by his love for us and by grace. Now, what we need to do is have faith to believe that what was done by grace removed all the limitations of what the flesh and the enemy could do to us. So Jesus Christ not only defeated sin, he defeated the flesh, and he defeated Satan. And all three of those components, the sin, the flesh, and Satan try to hinder us and limit us from walking in the freedom that we have in Christ. So we want to thank God today that we can have access to that freedom and the possibility to remove all limitations because of what we have in Christ. Now, because of that, God wants us to be at peace and at rest whenever worry, stress, anxiety, all the things that try to come to limit the victory that we have in Christ. We have to be always aware by faith of what Christ has done for us. And that's what keeps those limitations away from us. Let's take a look at Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right. So there we get from Paul that one of the limitations that we have is anxiety, worry, stress and the way we break that is through prayer and thanksgiving and the peace of god will come in where there was anxiety and stress instead so we give praise and prayer there and i love that where it says the peace will surpass all understanding in other words some of it we won't even be able to figure out on our own because God can do way over and above what we're limited to in our thought life. Mm -hmm. That's right. So our thoughts limit us. So one of our big battles of limitation is our thought life. So we have to be very, very careful that our thoughts don't dominate us. Now, all of us have to guard our hearts and our minds through the word of God and through how we think. I myself have to battle that continually, Sarah does. We all do. Does anybody here struggle sometimes with your thought life? And so we have to really deal with the thoughts that try to limit us. And today we're gonna to talk about how to destroy limiting thoughts. Amen. Thoughts that try to limit us from going forward. And uh, I want to bring up uh, another scripture. Let's go to Isaiah 33, 2. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. Wow. So every day we get up, we give the Lord praise, we give the Lord thanks. We go over that almost. I must speak that about 80% of the teaching because it's what the Bible says we're to do. And it's something we have to really be strong in. 
But he says, uh, here he says, Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength yeah. every morning, our salvation in a time of distress. Amen. So God knows that we're going to battle sometimes, limit thoughts that limit us, try to stress us out. But he says, I'm going to bring you wisdom and knowledge, and that's going to be the stability of your times. So having said that, let me share this with you. Uh, one of the things that I think we have to really realize is knowledge alone is good, but if you don't use it wisely, it won't benefit you. Yeah. It's great to have the knowledge of the word, but that doesn't change us till we start to apply it and use it. So we have to be good stewards of the knowledge that we have and use it to its maximum potential for it to be effective in our lives. That's true. And we all can be better at this. I know I can be, but we're going to believe today that we're going to become strong and bold and passionate about using the word of God, speaking the word of God, destroying the limits of our mind and our thoughts and expecting God to take away the limitation as we speak his word. Amen. So one of the best things that we can do to our thoughts, number one, is fill them with the knowledge of the word of God. Yes. Number two, with that knowledge, destroy the works of the devil and pull down vain thoughts, lofty thoughts, any thought that is trying to exalt itself above the mind of Christ Amen. or take away what God has promised us. Amen. And actually, then what happens is as you continue to practice this, so let's say you have a stronghold because that, that is really dealing with strongholds right. in your mind. So strongholds are places where a bunch of lies have been built up. It's like a bunch of plaque on a tooth. You have a buildup. Yeah. Um, so that's what a stronghold is like, right? So you can't really get to the root of things. So you have to remove the plaque to see the root, right? Yeah. And then once you see the root, you can see the truth. But once you fill it with the word of God, then you have the stronghold of hope. Then you have the stronghold of love. Then you have the stronghold of peace. Then you have the stronghold of hope and things which used to uh, for lack of a better word, stick to you or take up more time in your mind, fall off because the stronghold of peace and the stronghold of love has become so strong in your thoughts. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You replace the, this, the, that mountain that is standing in your way with the mountain of peace. Right. And in order to do that, we have to bring scripture to our mind and get revelation of it. Now, let's talk about that. See, you can hear the word, but that doesn't mean necessarily you have revelation of the word. So it's the revelation that breaks the stronghold. Amen. The revelation, the word revelation means that you get the true meaning of what God is saying. It's not just words, it's truth that's been revealed that uncovers the hidden meaning of what it really means. Yes. So one thing that's to, a good definition. Yeah, it uncovers the true meaning. So it's one thing to know the word, it's another thing to have the true meaning of the word, how we can apply it, and what it means. See, if I I can understand that Satan is defeated, but if I don't believe he's defeated and know that he's been defeated by the power of the resurrection by life of Jesus, when I go to speak to Satan, he, he's not going to move because he knows I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. But when you know what you're talking about, that you know you have the authority, that you know you have the power, the dunamis, that power comes out of your mouth and destroys thoughts, destroys the works of the enemy, and destroys every stronghold that tries to attack you. 
So I have a right to speak to worry and say, worry, you have no power, none, compared to the Lord Jesus Christ. His power defeated you. Therefore, I have a right to destroy you and drive you out. So because I know he defeated it, and I have a revelation of that, I expect what I speak to happen because I know what I believe. And you know who lives in you. And yeah, and I'm fully persuaded that he has won the victory over the stress, over the worry, over whatever else is coming against us. Amen. So we just don't know. We, we believe it and we speak it out of his power. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to John. I'm, I'm sorry, Philippians 4. Not that I speak regarding need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. So here Paul's talking about when we have a need, no matter what that need is, he said, I have learned to be content. Now, how did he learn that? He learned through experience that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. In other words, I have a belief that no matter what need I have, whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, that God has already met it. Mm -hmm. And I'm trusting in him right now. So if I have everything I need, I still need the Lord to trust mm -hmm. in him. Amen. If I don't have what I need, I still need the Lord because ultimately he's still my source. In all things. In all things. So Paul said, I've been full and I've been hungry, but no matter which, I know my God will come forth and supply all my need. Amen. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all of us need strength at different times in our life. Sometimes we're going along, we're having a great day. We still say, thank you, Lord, for this day that you've made, and thank you for all that you've done for me today. Or you might be having a difficult day and say, Lord, thank you that you were going to get me through today, despite all that I'm going through. Yeah. Can I come in on it? Um, yeah, you know, one thing I've learned to pray every day is I've learned to ask the Lord for strength yeah. every day, strength, courage, endurance. I know it's in me, but Lord, let it come out because I need strength to face the day. And we, I feel like where we are on the biblical calendar, we need strength because there's such a you know, spirit of fear as we're talking about. There's so much fear. There's so much anxiety. There's so much worry. There's so much confusion that we need strength, wisdom, and discernment to navigate through these through these situations, to navigate through these issues. Yeah. We need the strength and we not just physical strength, not just emotional strength, but we also need the mental strength to navigate through these things. Yeah. Because there's so much in the world right now that's uncertain and all kind of things we go through personally and uh surprises that we don't always know about and and when they come upon us it tries to limit us yeah to focus on the problem and on ourselves. and as we do that we start to get more and more overwhelmed yeah by what we feel what we see and what we can't control. And that's okay. That's not, uh, that's normal. But all those things God has an answer for in the sense that we go to the word, we go to prayer and we seek the Lord. He will bring out the peace and even a strategy and a plan 
<laughs> to help us get out of that. You know, a lot of times God wants to give us little plans and strategies. I don't, yeah, that's uh, my favorite thing. I love that. Yeah. It, in, in times of not knowing or difficulty or whatever we're supposed to be doing. And, and a lot of times, too, we got to step out in faith, not always knowing how am I going to get through this or what's the best way to deal with this. But once you step out in faith, you believe God and are willing to do whatever he asks you to do, he will get you through. He will. He will. So open up with God about everything. Say, God, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm believing for. Anything that's trying to limit you or hinder you, just talk to God about mm -hmm. it and say, here's where I am and be honest. Mm -hmm. And God will step in there and take every concern that you have. Mm -hmm and cast it upon him yeah come to me all you that are heavy laden and weary i'll give you rest i will give you rest for my and um, all of us need at times rest so how do you cast your cares upon him you just take every care and say lord i give this over to you i'm not quite sure what to do here but i know you know what to do yeah so i'm asking you for wisdom I'm asking you for strength. I'm asking you for stability. Fill my thought life with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And he loves to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and he can fill you with the word. And always, too, remember the good things God's done for you. His faithfulness all through your life. Always remind yourself, God's been faithful to me. He's done it before. He'll get me through this. Right. And that will remove limitation. Yeah. I want to share something about casting your care. I really used to struggle with casting my care. I thought it sounded great. Um, and I would like do it for five minutes and then I'd be back in the worry. I don't know if anyone's ever struggled with that, but um, all right. So Fran has, but <laughs> okay. So I have one other person, but um, I want to share something just a, as a practical application about how to cast your care. Um, the way that the Lord has revealed it to me is first of all everything's been done on the cross so i will close my eyes and 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 visualize and 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 come into communion by the power of the holy spirit with jesus and i will hand it right back to who it belongs to and at that moment, and I'll wait there, I, I will wait and peace will then flood my soul because otherwise, you know, if I think I'm, I'm casting my care, but it hasn't really um, come out, if that makes sense. And so for me, it's a very, uh, it's a very visual thing. Maybe you're wired a little bit differently. If this strategy works for you, take it, apply it, modify it take it to the Lord. But I just wanted to share something practically. I've been told to cast my care my whole life. I didn't understand what that meant. I thought it was like, you know, a baton. Then you take back at the relay race and then you pick it up again and pass it off and take it back and forth, back and forth. But you really, if you see it and you really take it to the cross and you really have a revelation that Jesus has overcome everything and you hand it off to him, and you leave it there. And then if it starts to come back, you say, wait a minute, that's not mine anymore. It never was mine. It never was mine to carry. I'm giving it back to you, Lord. Sorry, I picked it up again. It's yours. I, I remind you, it's yours. So I just want to share something practically about how to walk that out. Yeah. I don't know if you've struggled with that, but I, I, I personally oh, yeah. struggled with that. Well, <laughs> I hear these people, they're like, I cast my care. And I was like, you know, that took me, that was a steep learning curve. <laughs> you know, one of the key things too about uh, changing your thought life is we, is the word, the Bible says we're to meditate yeah. on the scripture. And by meditating on scriptures, this is what I mean. Once you learn about different things about God, especially like God's character, his love, his mercy, yeah. his compassion, his kindness, his goodness, 
his faithfulness. faithfulness. All those words are part of who God is. He's kind, he's good, he's loving, he's merciful. Uh, all these things, as you learn and meditate on them, that, that starts to overtake your mind and starts to remove fear and doubt and unbelief and all the things that try to limit us from having peace. Yeah. So the more I meditate on that, now, it's like, as, you, as you're getting to know God better, uh, it's no different than building a friendship with somebody. What, what you're really doing is you just hang out with them more. You talk to them more. You pray. You have dialogue. You throw things out there to him. And just let him know where you are. And you're very transparent. And he loves that. And he sent the Holy Spirit to help us and lead us and guide us. Uh, so the more that you realize he wants to be your friend and that his arms are continually outstretched to you, you start to feel all these limitations that are trying to uh, hinder you. They start to break off, like Sarah said. Yeah. Or they drop off. Uh, so God is not far from you. He's with you. He's close to you. And as you get to know God, you start to build trust with God and you start to trust his word. And then what happens is you start to have what I call a pioneer spirit. Amen. You start to actually take bold steps of faith and start to believe you can do things through Christ that you could never do on your own. Yeah. You start to believe that whatever he wants you to do, you can do it. Mm -hmm. That you step out from the familiar. You step out from the norm and you're willing to take a risk because you really trust that the God that you believe in is going to back you and be with you. Abraham, by faith, started out where God told him to go, not even knew for sure where he was going, but he had such a belief and trust in the goodness of God, the love of God, the faithfulness of God, that he believed that whatever he would do, God would somehow back him and help him. Yeah. Does that make sense? It is. And it that, is. that limits things that try to hinder you from moving forward in your life. And another person that comes to mind is Joshua. Yeah. So Joshua had been hanging out outside, or is that what you're going to talk He's about? Of, yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So Joshua had gotten to know the Lord because he had been following Moses around. He was Moses's assistant, but he lingered outside the tent. He lingered outside the tent of meeting, which means he lingered in the presence of the Lord and learned the ways of the Lord. See, Moses learns the ways of the Lord. The children of Israel knew the acts of the Lord. There's when you're friends with a person, you know their ways, right. you know their ways. When you are familiar with a person, you just know what they do. Does that make sense to everyone? So Joshua, then because he had been lingering, he had been following Moses and he had been his understudy because he had seen all of this. He had that conquering pioneer spirit yeah. to go into the land. And he, whether it was, you know, and that actually happened, I think yesterday on the Hebraic calendar, marching around the walls. I mean, I, I believe if we told the people to march around the walls um, for six days in silence, there might be a little resistance, <laughs> But you know what I mean? And on the seventh day, they broke. So you're willing because you've gotten to know the ways of the Lord, even if they're outlandish to the ways of the world. Yeah, that's right. And so the more you get to know the ways of God yeah. and his character, it breaks limitations off your mind and gives you the faith to push forward and get through struggles that normally would hold you back. Yeah. So that's what's great about what God's word is for. So uh, let's look at John. Here's a great verse. John 5, 5 to 8. Watch this. And John, we have John here too. Oh, John Cho. Yeah. Hi, John. Double John. 
Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me in, into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. I love that one. I know you do. <laughs> so here's, here's a guy <laughs> that was really battling a lot of limits, right? He was batting a limit in his mind, a limit in his body, and a limit of redundancy that was there. So it's interesting that Jesus, when he saw the man, lying there he knew this man was in a difficult place yeah he knew this man was in a place of limitation but what did jesus say to him sarah first he said do you want to be made well That's so right. the first question is do you want it yeah do you want what i have because right. i'm willing to give it to you but do you want it so what that says we know that Lord, the Lord Jesus is willing and wants us not to live by the limitation we're in. That's good. Right? So we know that's his will. There's the truth. So because we know that, that's what paves the way for the faith to rise. Yeah, that's good. See, because if I know he's willing and I know he's able to do that now, that's the first thing that breaks limitation off of us when we know God's willing and he's able to do it. Amen. Amen. But then what's the next thing he says, Sarah? Well, the man says he has, the man has an excuse, but Jesus says to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. So even though the man keeps talking about his limitation exactly finally jesus speaks to the limitation and breaks its power because of his power that's greater than any limitation and it's actually the limitation jesus flips the limitation into an invitation to walk in freedom that's the right. limitation is broken and jesus grants him invitation to freedom that's right that's jesus that's right so today anything that's trying to limit you your limitation is an is an inviting for a what? What? It's it's an invitation for freedom. That's right. It's an invitation for freedom. So your limitation is an invitation to freedom. So the exact thing that's trying to come against you is the exact thing that God's going to use to get you through. Isn't that awesome? Yes. So what looks like is going to be a hindrance to you is the doorway for a blessing to you amen amen so that limitation that's trying to hinder you is a doorway for a blessing to you that adversity is an invitation to victory yeah. amen and look at the next verse which we all know here you go Uh, 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 next one there and we know that all things work together for good to those who love god to those who are called according to his purpose yeah so the thing that has tried to limit us or hold us back is probably the exact thing god's going to use to bring us out into even something better yeah. than when we went in yeah yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that man at the uh, pool of Bethesda. Um, yeah. He probably went back there at a certain time and told all the people it's the compassion of Christ. I don't know that, but his heart would have been permanently changed by the compassion of Christ. Yeah. So, right. And, and whatever. Or wherever he was, wherever he told people when he saw them in sick places. Yeah. 
that it bounds by things he would have said you can get past this yeah he did it for me that man i guarantee testified yeah i guarantee and the other part of that uh story that's so important is no matter how long you've been in a situation that's good or how short you've been in a situation makes no difference to the lord he can break the limitation if you know he's willing you know he loves you and you know he wants to do it yeah you know he's willing you know he loves you and you know he wants to do it those three things if you get that established inside of you today that is an ammunition against limitation amen hallelujah you know i'd like to say it this way every one of us have been limited by certain things in our life but every one of us has an open invitation from the lord to break free from those limitations amen today he's inviting you to say i'm going to bring you forth trust me i'm willing i can do it and i want to do it now we by faith believe that and we're going to trust god for that all right let's go to philippians 1 19 20 we're almost going to be able to wrap this up soon here philippians 1 i love this verse now i know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ yeah amen so whatever we're limited by, we know it's going to turn out for our deliverance through prayer and through the spirit of Christ. So today we just praise you, Lord, and thank you that no matter what's trying to limit us, it's going to turn out for my deliverance. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Praise you for that. Amen. That's a great, great verse. And now let's go to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So confidence is a big thing to break limitation in our life. Are we confident? that if we ask anything according to his will, that he hears us. Yeah. And we have to believe that when you pray and I pray, that he hears us. So we have to trust God for that every day. And we believe God every day that he hears us. And the Bible says we can even be bold at times when we ask. Mm -hmm. And we can do it with incredible passion. Lord, I'm believing for this. I need this. And I'm trusting you for this. And just be bold with him. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's in his will, he loves it. That's true. He loves it. He wants you to say, come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. So whatever you're going to do, when you're in your marriage, in your work, uh, whatever you're doing that you need an answer for today, go boldly to God and ask him yes and he will bring deliverance yeah and turn this out for your good yeah don't hold back be strong be bold be courageous speak to that sickness speak to that doubt speak to that unbelief speak to fear speak to anything that's trying to limit you and be bold be courageous and let the lord battle with you because it's not your fight alone he goes in there with you the battle is the lord's so when you know that it helps get you through difficult situations to try to limit you yeah stuff that sometimes we can't figure out uh that we don't even know why it's going on but we trust and go confidently to the lord saying lord we're expecting you to bring us through yeah in jesus name and a lot of times, I mean, I do think that there's a place to, to get understanding, but sometimes even as you're praying and even if you're seeking understanding, 
if you still have that word, so let's say it's with healing and you don't know what the root cause is yeah. and you've Googled everything under the sun, you've seen every doctor, whatever that looks like. The bottom line is he still is healer. Yeah. He still is healer. So we can put our trust in that and our confidence in that, that he always was and always will be healer. And he already was, yeah. he already has healed. So we can say, I'm banking on this. Yeah. Even if I don't fully understand. Yeah. That's right. That's who you are. Yeah. And you're faithful. You know, and uh, next week, in our next uh, message in this series, I'm going to talk about how we are called to be pioneers, that we are a pioneer people. And that's going to get into where we'll really get into talking about how to take risks, how to step out in your purpose and your destiny, how to pioneer yourself ahead and how to leave the familiar we're going to get into all that next week where we really get into the pioneer there's different uh ways we pioneer but we're going to talk about how we are all called to be pioneers of faith pioneers to go forth and as we understand that spirit you know there's the pioneer there's the settler some people just settle for the ordinary we're not going to settle for the ordinary. We're going to be pioneers to push through, believe God, and go forth and take the risk of where he wants to take us into those next steps that maybe we don't even understand right now, but we're going to believe God to pioneer and get through to where God wants us to go. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I was praying this morning about um, the message, and I actually didn't know until later later in the morning um fully what you're going to share but yeah and not even fully but um i was talking to the lord about risk and um he took me to this place where it was kind of and it wasn't gruesome or it wasn't sad it was actually very um encouraging so if you can hear it through that frame of mind it was very very encouraging he was saying you know you know sarah when you're at the end of your life would you rather have taken the risk or would you have rather lived with regret? And I said, Lord, I'm glad I took risk. I am glad that I took risk and I trusted you with risk rather than live in regret of not doing stuff. Yeah. I And so that was really powerful. If you get the revelation of that and you think about when you're, I would rather step out in faith on a word of the Lord that he's spoken and risk it all then regret and sit there and go well i don't know another year's passed by but i love stepping out in risk and i have never stepped out in risk risk that the lord's given me a word on and had the lord not just back it but just bolster it and like blow it up out of the blow it out of the park he yeah. always has mm -hmm. he always has so I would rather live in risk than live in regret. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we all have many, many stories, I'm sure, of times we had to step out and <laughs> believe for things. And we weren't sure how it was going to work out. And God comes. To, and guess what? It's better to step out and not succeed <laughs> than never step out and stay in your own comfort zone. Because mm -hmm. I believe when we stand before the Lord, he's going to honor us for times we've stepped out and believed him and broke through limitation yeah. when we could have held back. Yeah. I, I really believe that that is really, uh, you know, sometimes when you're taking a leap into the unknown, it's not always easy. But if you believe the Lord's led you to take that leap, you can't always figure it out. But you will understand in the long run that god will work it for good so if you're whatever you're believing for today we're agreeing with you that god's going to get you through and he's going to bring you out into a place of blessing hallelujah let's let's go to psalms 112 and take a look at this verse i love this verse Surely he will never be shaken. 
the righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Yeah, so there are times when we could be shaken by something that happens to us. We're not sure what, how things are going to work out. It might be spiritual. It could be emotional. It could be financial. It could be whatever. But we have to trust that if we truly love the Lord, and we all do here, if we truly want what the Lord wants, that he will not only perfect that, but take care of us and help us through. Even if it's a not a good report, we have to believe that we have to trust in the Lord to get us through no matter what it is. Amen. 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 You have a comment on that one? About trusting God to get us through? Yeah. Yeah. There, I just, I feel like, you know, as we grow and develop and our walk with the Lord, um, obedience is always a choice. But at the same time, there's really no other option. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You always have a choice, but there's no other option that is ever going to satisfy. That's right. And so today, as we finish this, I want to make it clear to all of you, this whole message today was kind of a preview for next week, just to kind of get a foundation that you can overcome anything that's trying to limit you. Yeah. And next week, we'll cite more examples, practical testimonies of how God has brought us through. Yeah. And ways we had to believe God for the unknown. Yeah. How we had to trust him to get through certain situations. Yeah. And we'll get into that more next week. It's going to be great. But to finish with today, let's go to Psalm 56. Oh. I love this. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Yeah. So here the psalmist is saying, I'm going to praise God, praise his word, I'm going to put my trust in him, and I will not fear. So he he's saying this probably while he's in a situation where he could be fearful but he's not going to bow to the fear, the fear of the limitation. So what can flesh do to me? And so we have to really believe no matter what anybody tries to do to us, that God will break us free. Now, I have seen God come through against insurmountable odds. Amen. In my life, and I'm sure you have. I could cite so many examples. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing I want to share with you today is that anything that you are facing, that you are dealing with today, whatever it might be, I want you to know it has a limitation. And God, who is eternal, can handle anything that's temporary. I have to believe that. We have to believe that. Because we can be overwhelmed by physical things, emotional things, uh, financial things, relational things, relational things, uh, because we live in a fallen world and people just can try to do all kinds of things to try to limit us with what God's promised us. Right. But today we're breaking off limitation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're going to believe God. One last thing before we finish today is if you believe that God is good, if you believe that he is willing and wants to get you through no matter what, it will break limitation right away off your thought life. Yeah. So that's what we're going to believe for today. So we're going to pray. And let's ask the Lord, Sarah, 
You ready? To Hard days off, ever. To break off any limits, emotionally, physically, financially, socially, relationally, of any person that's watching today or would be watching later. Let's. I'm going to let Sarah pray that today. You go ahead and pray. All right. Father, we, so we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who created all of the universe, every star in the sky, and you created all of us. You created all of us so individually, and you, sa you said that our value is in the blood of Jesus. And so, Lord, with that blood of Jesus, we take our authority in Jesus' name, and we break every limiting hindering spirit right now every spirit of delay in jesus name we break that in jesus name we break that over finances we break that over marriages we break that over thought lives we break that over uh because you could we break it over physical uh physical ailments physical symptoms sicknesses we break that power right now that you have no power that the anointing of god destroys every yoke right now and i just release that healing power that healing anointing to go and deliver your people in jesus name i thank you lord that even healing is flowing um i see the river of life flowing even healing emotions healing minds healing souls i thank you lord um i even see uh relational healings um, that, that where there's been discord, I actually see in the spirit that people are shaking hands and hugging again. So uh, you're breaking down that middle wall of separation right now in relationships, according to um, Ephesians 2, because you have made the peace, O Lord, and that you are our peace. So I thank you, God, that where there's been limits right now, that they are crumbling like an old brick wall, like an old brick wall, they fall. And so we thank you, God, for that. We thank you, God, for right, right now. And instead of that limitation, Lord, that you are raising up your standard, that you are raising up your standard, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, you raise up your standard, oh Lord. And so we thank you, God, for that. And I thank you, God, that no matter what the situation is, just like the man at the pool of Bethesda, that your arm is not shortened, that it cannot save that your arm is not shortened, that it cannot save, that your eye is on the sparrow and how much more is on your eye on each and every person, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for right now, the love of God piercing through every limitation of fear, every limitation of anxiety, every limitation of worry, every limitation of intimidation. We command you to leave your people in Jesus' name that the love of God sets your people free today, God. The love of God sets your people free today, God. And I actually see prison doors opening and people coming rushing and running out in joy and excitement. It says in um, Isaiah 55 that you will go out with joy and peace, mm -hmm. joy and peace. And I see a just a joyful triumph, Lord. And I thank you, God. I um I also just uh, sense to break every spirit of heaviness over your people, God. I break that spirit of heaviness that has tried to limit your people from worshiping you, from hearing your voice, every deaf, dumb, and blind spirit. I break your grasp on your people right now that your word says that your sheep hear your voice. And your rod and your staff, they comfort us, O Lord. So Holy Spirit, right now, we ask you, O Holy Spirit, right now that you go and you comfort your people. You're comforting, protecting, spirit of truth, pour out the spirit of wisdom and revelation in places where we need revelation. We need the revelatory knowledge of the word, not just, not just to hear the word, but to exponentially have it, have it uh, stick. Have it stick, have it stick, have it stick on the walls of our souls. Lord, I just thank you, God, for that. And I thank you, Lord, for fresh vision being released, that where there's been limitation on vision, I break your assignment right now in Jesus' name, and I release vision from above, fresh strategies from heaven, 
heavenly vision. And I thank you, God, for that. I thank you, God. I see um, in this spirit, and I, I'm, I'm sensing what the Lord is saying. I'm seeing people uh, climbing up ladders. And if you recall um, that when Jacob wrestled with um, the angel, which was Jesus, and at, at Bethel, that um, it was the angel, it was the uh, angels were ascending and descending up the ladder. And so I thank you, Lord, that right now the angelic host is going forth at the word of God, that the word of God is going forth right now in Jesus' name, and that your people are coming up higher to see from your perspective, that they are seeing from a heavenly perspective, according to Colossians 3, that you say, set your mind on things above, not on things of this world. And I thank you, God, for that. I thank you, Lord, all distraction breaks in Jesus' name. The limitation of distraction, the limitation of distraction breaks in Jesus' name. I also break the limitation of depression. I break the limitation of anxiety. I break the limitation of confusion. And I release peace. Peace like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river. There's healing in your presence, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, today, and we give you glory now, Lord. Glorify your name. That Lord. every person Thank you, Lord. walks. Thank you, Lord. In newness today. Walks in a new faith. And that they will walk in a new confidence and a new boldness. And they will be strong in the power of your might. And that they will be ready to be like a pioneer and step out. Thank you, Jesus. And be strong and be courageous and bold and not let things limit them, but be ready and willing to do whatever you want them to do. I thank you for these pioneers of faith. Yes, Lord. That they will be ready to take a leap and be strong and courageous. Thank you, Lord. That they can leap into the unknown, knowing that they're fully persuaded that you're going to back them. And I thank you that you're going to initiate great desires and plans that you put inside of them. Yes, Lord. That they will walk in the fullness of all that you prepared for them before the foundation of the world. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 All right. Well, that was great. So, Lord, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for everybody that's on today. And we bless every person in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we want to thank the Lord for the word today. And we want to thank you for your love and your support for us. And you're giving and so if you want to give your tithe or offering you can go to unitecherryhill.com and as you know everything that we do we give first to the lord and give out to the needs of people and last Amen. week where do we sow we, uh in honor of um passover we wasn't it passover last week the week's no, bird resurrection was it easter easter yeah. Did we sow? Because we sowed into Rabbi Jason. Yeah. We sowed at Fusion Global. Yeah. And then we sowed somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But we, oh, and then we sowed into Andrew Romack as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we sowed into a lot of ministries to help. We sowed to there Israel. Was an, another one. Yeah. is Because we wanted to do Israel in light of Passover. Right. That's what we wanted to honor to the Jew. It says in uh, Romans 1 16 to the Jew first. But we've been able to, because of your giving, we've been able to minister into just countless needs of people locally yeah. and globally. So we want to thank you. So if you want to just go over there to give, that would be awesome. And we want to thank you for your faithfulness, your love, your support. We're very, very grateful. We're very, very grateful for all the people that come on every week, watch every, and watch every week beyond what comes on Sunday morning. And uh, we're praying about expansion. So keep praying for that, of ways we can expand what we're doing to get more and more ways to get to you. So we're 
we're coming up with a strategy and a plan and hopefully some things we could share maybe even next week, which will be good. It'll be great. Well, everybody, thank you for coming on today. Have yes. an incredible week. We bless you. We thank God for you. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you. Thank keep you, Keep praying for us. We'll keep praying for you. And we'll talk to you soon. See you all next Sunday. We love you guys. Have a great week. See you week. next Sunday. Invite somebody next week. It's going to be awesome. Thank all right. You. Love you guys. <laughs>